How's it going guys? Shayway here for a video. Today we're going to be discussing what the Apple Card is and whether or not you should have one. If you're familiar with Apple Card, hopefully you'll learn something new from this video and if this is your first time ever hearing about Apple Card, then this will be a great video to kind of give you an introduction to the services that Apple offers. So everyone, my name is Shea Wei and welcome to Shea Wei Tech where I cover lots of stuff in the tech industry. We're gonna get some scheduled programming coming here in the near future where I cover different things on different days. For instance, on Wednesdays, we're gonna start covering a specific app of the week that we'll call the app Spotlight, as well as on Fridays, I hope to do a recap of all the tech news that we've heard during the week, or at least some of the major headlines that you should be aware of. If you think you may be interested in any of that information, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the future content. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into it. What is the Apple Card? So if you're not aware, Apple launched their own credit card service that's built directly into iPhone back in 2019. The Apple Card is a digital first credit card Card platform, meaning the best features that you're going to get from the card are going to be based from the Apple Wallet app itself. But they do offer a physical card as well for all those places that don't support Apple Pay. And to be honest with you, that card is really cool. Just like any other Apple product, they think about all the details and they wanted to make it a sleek design. This is my personal card here. It is an all metal card and has a nice little clang to it. Listen when I hit it on the table. Yeah. That's satisfying. So the card, as you can see, has absolutely no numbers on the front, only the Apple logo and then the little chip on this side over here. On the back, we have no numbers as well. We have a Goldman Sachs logo and the MasterCard logo. So these are the two partners that they're working with to make this happen. The approval process and the bank backing it is of course Goldman Sachs. And then this is a MasterCard. So anywhere a MasterCard is accepted, this card would work, including the Apple Pay version. So what can you use Apple Card on? Apple Card is available to be taken anywhere that accepts Apple Pay, whether that be online, on websites, as well as in stores. And then of course, any place that takes Master MasterCard will also take the physical card as well. There's very, very few places that do not accept MasterCard here in the United States. One of those actually being Costco, but that is because they have a deal going on with Visa. So what is the big features of using this card? Well, first off, it has a really cool app that I'm going to show you here. It's built directly into the wallet app and you can see this actually changes colors depending on the items that you spend money on. So you can see here, this is my transaction history. As you can see here, I have a few monthly installments which we will get into here shortly, but you can also see there is some other types of purchases as well. What you can also see is there is little percentages back underneath the numbers. So you can see that Dunkin' Donuts actually gave me uh, 2% back where Spotify gave me 1% back. This is because Spotify is actually using the card number, whereas Dunkin' Donuts, I used Apple Pay. And so this is where the instant cash back feature that they offer with this card comes into play. You get 2% back for any Apple Pay purchases, and sometimes even more than that, 3% to 5%, basing on whether or not they have any offers going on with specific places. For instance, there was something going on, and it may still be going on, to where if you were to shop at Panera Bread and use Apple Pay, they gave you 3% back. I believe it's 3%, it was either 3% or 5%, but they gave you more back than the 2% offer. Sorry, I gotta cut in here. I forgot to tell you that there's also the option to get 3% back on Apple purchases, but later on in this video, we're gonna talk about some more features that's also beneficial to the Apple store. So the way it works is the following day after that purchase is finalized, they give you an instant cash back onto your Apple Cash Card. So you can see on my Apple Cash Card, I currently have $243. Personally, I like to let that get up and then use the Apple Cash Card to pay off my Apple Card. So think of Apple Cash Card as like a debit card that works digitally only, right? So you, there's no physical card that is attached to that, but you can use it to pay your Apple Card balance as well as transferring it to your bank that you have linked to your wallet app. So so theoretically, I could use $243 and pay off my Apple card, or I could take that $243 and transfer it to my bank. So one downside to the instant cash back, this little card here, the physical card, when you use it, 
you only get 1% cash back with this card. So Apple is kind of using this as a way to make you use Apple Pay more, which I'm completely cool with. I think Apple Pay is way more efficient and honestly a lot more secure in the long run. So I understand, but it would be cool if you got the 2% back on the physical card too, whenever you could. But they had to give you some reason that is more enticing to use Apple Pay. Because trust me, I would love to go to a restaurant and sit that down on a table. Actually, don't ever do that. That's probably like the most douchiest thing that you could do at a restaurant. <laughs> but it does sound satisfying and I don't blame you with that. Just do it at home, not at a restaurant. I wanna take another look into the wallet app and kind of show you a little bit more about it. So I have the card pulled up here. I'm gonna go ahead and open up a specific transaction. So I'm gonna pull up this Dunkin' Donuts right here, right? So on here you can see the exact purchase that I made as well as previous transaction history. Another cool thing about this too is if you use this at a specific location, so let me see if I can go back here to a place that I actually swiped a card, right? I used Apple Pay at this Publix here. It actually shows on the map this exact Publix location that I used Apple Pay at, as well as the previous transaction history for that as well. Very, very cool, and I love the way this looks, and I hope that in the future, we'll start seeing other banks like Chase Credit Cards or Amex Credit Cards have features like this as well. This is just a very, very intuitive way of seeing your spending. There is a button too where you can check your weekly activity. As you can see, I don't really have much here for this week, but I could tap the year today and kind of see a little bit more information. And it shows you what categories and where you've been spending most. It looks like a lot of my categories is shopping, food, and entertainment, which to be honest with you is not a big surprise to me. <laughs> but it helps you build better habits and kind of understand where you're spending money and where you can cut back. Of course, this is a credit card, so they are trying to make money. So the more you use it, the better chances there is for you to have to pay interest but Apple seems to be kind of letting you know hey you're going to be charged this amount of interest on this day for instance if I hit the pay button it shows that I could pay right now or if I didn't have the option to pay early I could actually slide this back here and it would tell me how much money I would have to pay in interest for not paying the whole amount of course, I'm paid ahead right now, so it doesn't give me that option to see, but I'll see if I can find a video to kind of give you an idea of what this would look like. So as you can see here in this video, it's actually showing you exactly how much money you would have to pay in interest if you were not to pay the full amount by the due date. So I did another video about Apple Card earlier this year, specifically around the feature that I'm about to talk about, and that is the special financing that is offered through Apple. So Apple offers special financing as well when you purchase things from the Apple Store. For instance, in addition to getting 3% back on an iPad purchase, you will sometimes see on the website options to do monthly payments or monthly installments for that iPad, which allows you to get devices upfront without having to pay the bulk sum at the beginning. And these are interest-free payments, which makes it really awesome. Personally, I did this last year for a new iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil, and I'll link that video down below in case you wanna see that and what that process actually looks like. So guys, I hope you learned a little bit more about the Apple Card. If there's any questions that you may have about the Apple Card that you think I may be able to answer, make sure to leave a comment down below. I'd love to help out as much as I can, as well as checking out some of the other videos I have on the channel. I'll link some down below that I think are going to be beneficial, as well as in the cards for this video. If you like this type of content, guys, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future content, as well as liking this video as it helps get this pushed out to other people that may find it interesting too. Thanks so much for checking out today's video, guys. My name is Shea Wei, and we'll see you next time on Shea Wei Tech.